Well, good evening, everybody. It is Sunday night. This is Mary with Stamps and Lingers. I, you know what? It isn't Sunday night. It is Saturday night at 7 o'clock, not 8 o'clock, which is kind of a perfect time. So I'm going to, uh, if you're out there, I'm, I'm appreciating you spending part of your time with me. I'm going to refresh the screen off here to the left just to be sure that I am making an actual video and not talking just to myself. Ah, I see some folks are coming on. Hi, Karen. Hi, Mary. That, glad you could join. Hey, Amy, how are you today? Uh, hi, Patricia. Thank you for coming. I do appreciate it. I know it's hard on a three-day weekend because everybody's got plans. If you got your ribs rubbing and smoking and going, I hope we're, uh, I've got some ribs thawing that I'll rub tonight before we go to bed and then we'll smoke them tomorrow. Um, so that ought to be fun. Hi, Llewellyn. Glad to see you. Hi, Faith. Hi, Barbara. All right. So, hi, Donna. Appreciate you joining from Drury, Washington. Um, hi, Kay. Hi, Jean. Appreciate you and Sharon joining tonight. Hi, Linda. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, tonight, we are going to make a card using a couple of uh, products and I should probably get the actual other stamp set. It's going to make it a heck of a lot easier to stamp if I have everything that I need, don't you think? I mean, that's just me though. The first stamp set we're going to use is handwritten. This is a stamp set that's currently available, so if you don't have it in your stash, you could get it right now. Um, and I highly recommend it. I really like it and it is carrying over into the new catalog. So that's kind of fun. It's a background stamp. Um, and this is one of the stamps that uh, I do believe will still be available in wood. Hang on just a second, and I will double check that for you just to be sure I'm not lying. Because I really hate to lie to you. That just seems rude for me to lie to you. So hang on just a second. That's correct. So it will still be available in wood mount and cling. And if you remember, um, only the background stamps are still going to be available in the North American market um, with wood blocks coming with them. Everything else, all of the other stamp sets are either cling, which it used to be the red rubber, or photopolymer, which is the clear ones. Thank goodness we got rid of the clear mount words that weren't clear at all, right? The other set we are going to use is one that is coming shortly to you in, le in almost like 10 days. Can you even believe that? 10 days more and we'll have the new catalog out. And it is the Petals and Parcels stamp set bundle. Um, and it has a stamp set that has several um, sentiments, including birthday, uh, you did it and you're the best, thank you, and a little something along with a two from so you could make some tags. Um, and it also has a cute little box that you can create with the bundled Perfect Parcel die set. So we are going to use all of that. Well, we're not gonna make the box, we're gonna make a card, but we're gonna use this pretty die. I'm gonna show you what it does, and then we're gonna use the sentiment here. But you can see it also has a tag topper die so that you could create a gift tag with this set. Isn't that fun? All right, and then this is the card. Hi, Pam. Hey, Jean. Hi, Robbie. Glad you could join. What did I just do there? Ooh, made a made a bonker. I bonked it. I bonked it. I'm so sorry. So this is the card that we made. Um, I actually believe this would be a good masculine card, um, even with the tassels. You know, I don't think, I think we get a little hung up about what guys can handle on their cards. So I think even with these tassels, I think they're tailored enough. Um, I think this would actually be a very good masculine card. So we've got some die cuts from the perfect parcel set on the front. And then the inside is really pretty, pretty straightforward, a strip of DSP and a second sentiment and a little flirty do there. All right, so let us commensurate, shall we? We're gonna start by creating the card front and that used the handwritten stamp set or stamp for the uh, background. So I'm gonna use my stamp res. I'm gonna show you a little trick here, okay? So my card fronts, if, if you haven't noticed, hi Carol, glad you could join. <laughs> um, if you haven't noticed, most of my card fronts end up being a, a panel that is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth matted on some uh, on another color that is slightly larger, four inches by five and a quarter, right? When you're using the background stamps, they do not go right to the edges of the rubber, right? So if you make 
your card front the exact size that you need it. Then when you get ready to stamp, you have to be careful and make sure that your stamped image actually cut, touches all of your cardstock, which is fine. But if you're using your Stamparatus, which why wouldn't you? Because you're making you're doing a background stamp and it is the best way. When you push your cardstock up into the corner and then push this stamp up into the corner, you, you either push the stamp up into the corner or you have to try to set your cardstock out here somewhere and then do that. Here's the trick. Make your panel bigger than you need. Put it right up in the corner. Put the stamp right up in the corner and then we're gonna go from there and I will show you how to fix it. Now obviously I do not have the foam mat in here. The, I just have the magnet because this is a cling. So this is a piece of crumb cake and I'm going to use crumb cake ink and ink up my stamp. And I really like the Stamparatus for these background stamps because it, it sometimes can be hard to get an, uh, an even image. But with Mr. Stampopotamus, your, your worries are over. All right, so we're just gonna give that a good rub. Thanks, Robbie. I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm going through a phase where I have my nails done, keep them done. We'll see how long that lasts now that I'm back at home and consistently feeding. I'm trying to remember to wear gloves when I'm outside, but I'm not very consistent with it, not going to lie. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I think I will give it another little go, just because I've got some kind of light spots in the middle. I'm not real worried about them, but what the heck, I've got the Stamparatus. Why wouldn't I make it like I want it to look? Okay, so now I'm going to pick that up, and I'll just wipe off my stamp right here. Are you guys having any doing anything fun for the long weekend? I hope you're having something, doing something, and remembering why we're having this holiday. The men and women that gave everything, gave everything so that we could. Okay, now... That is not a very pretty card front, is it? Because we have, hey Brooke, hey Karen. Uh, is Finn happy I'm home again? Yes, he's quite happy I'm home again, there's no doubt. If this was actually my card front, I'd have a problem, right? Because I've got this big gap here. But because I cut this larger than I needed, all I need to do now is trim it down to size. And of course, I'm going to cut off the edge that has the not so bueno, right? it would be goofy to cut the other edge. That would just be wrong. All right, so let's go ahead and get that cut off. Hang on just a second. Make sure it's kind of straight. And then I'm gonna cut the top as well. And there we have what looks like I made a perfect card front. Ah! All right, so let's go ahead and use a little liquid glue to mat that on new terracotta tile. This is one of the new 2019, 2021 col in colors. Gorgeous, I love it. Um, you know, we spent three years in New Mexico and at one point, Saltillo tile is the big thing in New Mexico for floors. And that this very much reminds me of the Saltillo tiles in our house and it's pretty. I like it, I like it. All right, we'll get that going. Easy and also peasy. And then I'm gonna wrap a piece of the new um, scalloped linen thread. This one is in terracotta tile. Um, I'm going to just measure out a length of it and find my scissors. Like this. Now I am currently out of snail, but if I was doing this when I had snail, I would use snail and I would just run a line right smack across there and lay it down just like that. You do want to kind of adhere it because you want, you're going to want to stick things to it like this. So I just do that to make sure I get it in about the right spot. You've heard me talk about dry fitting before. I am a big proponent in dry fitting. 
that didn't come out right. A big proponent in dry fitting? No. How about a big proponent of dry fitting? Because you can always move it if you haven't stuck it down. So I'm just giving that a little stick. And then I'm going to use some glue dots and adhere it in the back. How can I let myself run out of snail? It's easy. Because I forget to order it. Pretty easy, actually. Uh, because I'm a goofball also is another reason. But I will get some ordered soon. Okay, maybe not soon. Maybe the end of the month when I put in my host order. Speaking of the end of the month, the end of May is almost here. And what is right around the corner from May is June. And right in June, we have the end of the current annual catalog, the end of the current occasions catalog, and the start of the 2019-2020 annual catalog on the 4th. So everything else ends on the 3rd, and the annual catalog starts on the 4th. Okay, so this is ready. Let's set it aside, and let's talk dies for just a second. Now this little pair of dies right here is quite fun. Okay, I'm going to show you what it does. Using this demonstrator piece of cardstock. Ooh, in terracotta tile. Now, if you cut, if you use just this die and run it through, when you pick it up, this is what you get, you have left, okay? If you use just this die and run it through, then what you end up with is this piece right here. And in the blog post tomorrow, you're going to see hear me call this a backer okay so this is what came out of this die obviously not in terracotta tile now if you run these two together through the big shot what you're going to come up with is this you'll get first the the full intricate die that came from here and then it will also cut out this secondary piece Okay, and then you can really start to have a little fun. So what I did before you joined is obviously I cut some from terracotta tile like that. And then I cut the same thing again in pretty peacock. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this card is I'm going to use the terracotta large piece and the pretty peacock smaller piece but you could just as easily if you wanted to now if you were doing this you could use the large pretty peacock and the small terracotta tile i would probably change my ribbon color if i was using this combination i would probably change my ribbon color to the linen in pretty peacock and then my sentiment, I would make Pretty Peacock, and I'd probably heat emboss in white uh, my sentiment. Okay, so there's multiple ways to do this. You're going to get a lot of die cuts when you make this. Hang on to them. The uh, pack rat gets the multiple cards made. All right, so let's go ahead and use a little liquid glue to adhere this to our card front, or to this little backer that I've created. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this in so that it's all kind of a cohesive piece like that. Just got to play with it a little bit because, you know, it's an inanimate object and so it's going to be a little perverse. It's just the way it rolls. I'll pick it up with my tweezers. This is petals and or parcels and petals, uh, Tanya. It looks like this and the bundled uh, Perfect Parcel dies. It will be available with a 10% savings when you bundle it out of the new catalog. All right, so I'm just gonna do some liquid glue here on the back. And I wanna kinda get the little endy spots, right? Cause you want it to sit down. But of course you also don't wanna use a ton of liquid glue or it will go everywhere. Now, if you thought ahead better than I did, you could, in fact, put this on the adhesive sheets, but I didn't. 
And to be quite honest, I really just kind of prefer the liquid glue. That's just me, all personal preference. All right, and now I'm going to adhere this onto my backer. Isn't that fun that you get a backer with the die set? In the past, I would have had to adhere my intricate die cuts to a piece of cardstock and then cut it out like that. But we have it made for us, which I think is awesome sauce. All right, so I'm just kind of making sure it's all as centered as I can get. And then I'm just gonna use some liquid glue to adhere this to my ribbon, which is part of why I made the extra effort to adhere the ribbon to the card front so that it has got some stability. And I'm just gonna give that a good push. Demo the 3D little truck. Well, I will do that when I can get it, Neoka. I can't get it, it wasn't part of the pre-order. I don't think. Maybe it was. Let me look. I don't think so. I don't think I have it in my hot little hands. It could be that I do, but I don't think I do. I don't think so. Nope, I don't. But when I can, I will get it and I will demo it. We'll see if I can make it. All right. So that is adhering right there. And let's go ahead and set that aside for just a second. And now I'm going to make my sentiment. All right, so I've got a piece of terracotta tile cardstock and I'm going to use, thank you, thank you very much. Where are you, thank you, there you are, no. Nope. Where are you? There it is, okay. I'm gonna use thank you and I'm going to stamp him in tuxedo black. Thanks, Faith. It's a lot of practice. I use liquid glue a lot. A lot, might I just say. I use it a lot. You think I have tons of Stampin' Dimensionals? I mean, you're right, but I also have a lot of liquid glue. All right, so now I'm going to very quickly take this sentiment label die and we're going to run it through the big shot. Just kind of make sure that your die is centered over your sentiment. Obviously, if you were a braver person than I, you could cut the sentiment first and then stamp it, but that doesn't work for me very well usually. Just saying. Ooh, swordfish and asparagus. That sounds wonderfully good. And see what a pretty die that is? It just has some stitches on the end. I hope you can see that. All right. And now I'm gonna do another little decorative thing. This is Sahara Sand uh, 5 8 inch uh, trim. And it's kind of fun. I'm gonna cut a piece off and I'm gonna show you what you can do with it. Now, you could use it just like this as trim, or, or you see this little thread right here? If you pull this thread out, like so, ah, ooh, ah, you have tassels, fringy, fringy tassels. So what I did is I took and I cut I cut two lengths of three little tassels, like that, one length, and then two lengths. And you know what? If you're making this for a guy and you think it's uh, too froofy with the tassels, leave them off. It's your card, you can do what you want. But I like them. And so all I did here was 
just adhere them to a frozen pizza. That is very close, Amy. That is practically the same thing as swordfish and asparagus. Now all I'm doing is using a little liquid glue to adhere these to the back of my sentiment label, like so. And because I'm a little bit um, compulsive about it, I like to make, I wanted to make sure that the, that this part doesn't show in the front. So that's just me. You can be as obsessive or not as you like. And once again, if you really just hate how this looks, leave it off. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm just saying, just don't do it. But I kind of liked it. I thought it gave a little finishing bling without being froofy. Oh, yay, Carol. We're going to have a shushi or she shed. That's wonderful news. I love that commercial. I just channeled that guy for just a second. Okay. So we got that. And if one of these decides to get a little bit goofy, like that right there, just use a little more liquid glue. Oop. You know, now, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is what happens when you do videos. When you do live videos, what worked perfectly as you made your demo with no one watching you real time gets weirdified. This just isn't as hard as it's making itself look. I'm, so, I'm just telling you that. Don't get panicky here, people. It's just not that hard. But, you know, play with it until it's how you want. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my favoriteest thing ever. What is that, you say? Ah, yes. It would be Stampin' Dimensionals, which I cannot find right at this moment. They were here, I promise they're there. And I'm going to adhere this to my card front, right above my little filigree. That's what I'm calling that now. I've decided that this is a filigree. I think that's a good one. Thank you, Pam. Froofy. Yes, that's a word. Yes. Froofy. Less froofy. Okay. Now let's go ahead and just, I like it centered because that's how I roll. So I am centering it like that, more or less. That's actually a little less centered, less more. And look at that. You see? Okay, so here's a tip. This needs to have some good time to adhere, and I'm gonna tell you why. Perhaps you can see that this um, scalloped edge is higher than the ribbon itself, so you gotta give it a little extra help to be sure it stays on, but it will. You just gotta give it a second. And let's try that one more time. When I said I wanted it centered, I actually meant kinda like, you know, centered instead of cockamamie, which is what it was a second ago. There we go. Okay. Now to finish this off, I'm using some of the new 2019-2021 in color faceted dots. Love them. They're very fun. And I'm going to use the uh, Pretty Peacock. Pretty Peacock. Does not make, a, make you think you'll need to have your teeth gritted. Pretty Peacock. I'm going to put a couple of the medium ones up here. And this is kind of a, to me, this is kind of a tailored embellishment, right? It's not, I just think it's a little more tailored. So I don't, I think you're still good for a, a dude. That's just me though. Okay, so there's our card front. Let's set them aside for just a second and we will make the inside. Yep, the colors are very nice on this card. I love the terracotta tile with the pretty peacock. You are correct, Tony. I do too. I do too. Aren't you glad I think you're correct? That was kind of condescending of me. Sorry. Jeez, Mary. Sure, you're right, Tony. And since I think you're right, then you must be right. Hmm. 
All right, here we go. Now, I have a very vanilla panel for my inside, and I'm going to use my Stampamajig Acetate to stamp my You're the Best sentiment. Now, here we go. I'm gonna just get it what I think is centered. Like that. And we're gonna do it in tuxedo black. Let's see if I got lucky. See what what a, how you do that? Just pull it right down and if everything if your panel is square and you run keep the edge of your acetate up against the edge of the stamparatus uh frame, then you can see it is not only centered side to side, but it is not cattywampus. So we're ready to we're ready to ink and stamp, aren't we? There we go. We'll set that aside. Cover this up because that is a hand in the ink pad looking to happen. And we'll clean this off right quick. Quick like a bunya. Not even the bunnies are running around here, you guys. Man, it is hot. It's like not funny hot. Like Finn is not interested in being outside at all hot, which is really weird since he used to sit. When it's cool, he wants to sit outside all the time. Would love to see what the other images look like stamped. Um, from this set? Okay, when we get done, I will stamp these. Just one second. Let's, let us get done here, and then I will stamp those for you. All right, so I'm going to do the little flirty loo. Um, and by flirty loo, I mean this little flirty do. We're going to do him with a block because he's pretty straightforward. You can see what he's going to look like. So on this one, I'm just going to do him right there, just like that. And then I think, because I like it, I really do like these little faceted thingy doos. Hmm. Okay. Where is it, people? Here it is. I'm going to take a small, pretty peacock and just put it right there, just like that. Finally, let's go ahead and put him on his mat, and then I'm going to add his little strip at the bottom. I'm not sure what you have tons of, Karen, but sure. Rain, maybe? Is it rain that you have tons of? You guys, we're getting some weather. I know that much. I hope everybody's up okay up there, yeah? All right, so this is my terracotta tile mat. Try to get some semblance of straightness. Yeah, it's hot. Oh, bunnies. <laughs> no, you can keep the bunnies. Finn would like some extra bunnies, probably, but I, I'm good. I, we've got as many as we need. They're just hiding because it's way too hot. Your bunnies would come down here and have a heat stroke, I think. Okay, so I have a piece of the new In Color DSP, and this is really cool, folks. Look at this. Look at this design. This is the pretty peacock one. And then it's got... Um, a gingham design and a triangle design and a mosaic design in the five in the five new in color. Isn't that pretty? I like it. And the other color families have switched over to this design as well. So you'll have a chance to get all the colors uh, of the rainbow, of the Stampin' Up! Rainbow. You'll have all the colors of the Stampin' Up! Rainbow in the new designs. Won't oh, that be cool? So I just have a strip of the um, handwritten design in terracotta tile, and I'm matting it on terracotta tile, so it's kind of a tone-on-tone -tone look. It's just a strip. This is a pretty classic inside treatment, right? Kind of old school, but it's pretty. So I've got that just centered on its mat. And now I'm going to adhere it inside to the card panel. 
73 would be heaven. Oh, man, that's nice, Karen. Ooh, you know what? Handwritten has an up and a down. So, you know, unless you're just, if you're in distress, you can certainly put it upside down. But I would go ahead and put it right side up. That's just me. All right, there we go. I felt a little ink there. So, or a little glue there, so I'm going to get my rubber eraser and give that a little rub. Y'all, if you don't have a rubber eraser, get you a rubber eraser. It fixes those little extraneous glues and snails. All right. All right, so there we go. And now we're going to put it into our basic black mat. Easy peasy. I really do love this color combo. Terracotta tile, pretty peacock, crumb cake, and black. Nice color combo. Now, if you wanted to shush it up a little bit, wanted this to be for a woman a little more feminine, make your card base pretty peacock. And then you're just by doing that, I suspect you would think it was much more for a woman. That's just me, though. Maybe you wouldn't think that. All right, let me find my card front. Well, how is it card fronts can just disappear? I mean, like, they're right here, and then they're gone. I mean, they're not gone, obviously, because I just found it. But I can be looking right at it and be like, where is my card front? All right. Oh, look at that. I got one too many dimensionals. Hmm. Well, I'll put that back. All right. Okie dokie, hokey dokie. How cool is cool, Robbie? And it's dry, huh? Uh, hey, Mary, where is it drizzly? Are you in Washington? Right? So, you guys, I hope you don't think that when I don't come back and um, respond to all the comments, it isn't because I don't care, and it isn't because I don't love you. It's because Facebook does this weird thing where I'll be putting in responses, and then all of a sudden it refreshes my screen, and I've lost the comment, and I have to go back and find it. And when I've got 100 comments or 200 comments, that begins to drive me crazy. And so, y'all can blame Mark Zuckerberg. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Alrighty. And there is our card front. Whoa. Love it. I love it. I can't help it. I love it. Let's do a, an envelope right fast. And I'm going to use my little flirt de -lute My little flirt de -lute My flirty deal. Oh, nice. You know, I love that climate. There's no doubt about it. Okay, so I'm taking this and I'm just going to stamp it in the corners. And then I'm going to stamp it in the middle, kind of split the difference. And then I'm going to split the difference again, like that. Done. That's the front. Yeah, Faith, get the handwritten background stamp. It is really cool. I like it a lot. All right. And then to finish off, we're going to use another little bit of this uh, handwritten DSP. And put it on our flap. Okay, here we go. Look at that, my nails almost are terracotta tile. <laughs> yeah, no, not really. They're not even close. Not even close. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pam, don't get her started. She knows that the only reason I put that back was so that she wouldn't give me grief about overusing Stampin' Dimensionals. She is a Stampin' Dimensional miser, is what she is. I'm a spendthrift, and she's a miser in the dimensional department. <laughs> That's okay. We, we even each other out. All right. And there we go. 
one card. What do you think? You like it? I hope you like it. I hope you do. Okay, now let's set that aside and I'm going to grab a quick drink out of my drink here. Okay, it wasn't that quick. It was a long one. Before I stamp those, I want to show you something from 31, just because I have you as a semi-captive audience. In case you haven't been looking, check out the 31 link at the top of my blog. The special for May is the new small utility tote. This, people, is my new favorite tote. I, have now, I am now the proud owner of three of them, all in this gorgeous tropical print. It's not very big. It's actually about the size of a little bit bigger than a paper pumpkin box and about 12 inches tall. It's got wire around the edges, and so it kind of stands up, and it is perfect. I love it. You buy $35 worth of product, and you can get one of these for $12. Okay? Really cool. And then I just wanted to show you another pattern. This is a, another pattern we have coming. These are the flamingos. Aren't those pretty? And this is the totally thermal tote. Great huge. And it's insulated, so it'll help keep your food and beverages cool during the summer. And it's got a envelope here, not an envelope. This would be more like a pocket when it's on a tote, not an envelope. So I just wanted to show you those. They're really fun. And they're, uh, that small tote is on special in May. And May, as we just mentioned, is ending. Okay, let me get a piece of card stock. I think we should use some very vanilla so that we can really see what those images look like. You'll stay a second, here I come right back. And we're gonna use our Stamparatus right here. Okay, let's see what these flowers look like, shall we? I'm guessing the flowers are, um... oh, nice, Karen. Uh, what do I use the small utility tote for? Well, actually, let me tell you, you can put two of those in a large utility tote so you can divide your large utility tote and have it be an organizer in the back of your car. Um, when I went to Huntsville this last week, I had my large utility tote with one small one in it, and I put all of my stamping things, my cards, and I had my paper pumpkin in case I wanted to stamp. I put shoes and my chargers in the other side, and I was able to just pick it up and carry it and put it right in the car. And it slings handily over your shoulder, both the large and the small one. Um, so it's very nice when you're trying to make, I don't know about you guys, but when I make a trip from my car up to anywhere, I want to get everything in one go, whether I have too many things to do that or not. But it does help me with that. Okay, so this is our flower stamp. And we're going to stamp it in terracotta tile. Let's see what we get. Oh, get a dauber. Okay, hang on just a second. I will get the dauber. We're going to see what happens here. It'll be like an experiment. It's going to be like an experiment, you guys. All right, I've got an old Calypso coral dauber. Let's see what we get here. Oh, yes. Okay, so what we are referring to here is... On some of the distinctive stamps, because they have added the little um, texturizer, that, that isn't probably what they call it, but they've added the texture to the stamp to make it distinctive, sometimes you get some dots. So, take a dauber, after you ink your stamp, take a dauber lightly inked with the same color and just dab 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 all over. Let's see if that worked for us. Oh yeah, that's okay. Let's see what it does if you do stamped off once. And it went flying. It just went flying. Okay, so that was stamped first time and here's stamped off once. 
also pretty. That would be really pretty as a background, uh, you know, to create your own DSP. I really like that. I think that would be pretty. Okay, now we've also got a leaf set, a little leaf. Let's see how it looks. And I think we should stamp it in Pretty Peacock. Psh, hello, of course, Pretty Peacock. Oh yeah, that's a pretty little, pretty little leaf, isn't it? I like it. Okay, so there's that. And then we have one more that I think you might be interested in. So let's see what it does. Let me clean that off for a second. The small tote, yes, that's the one I was talking about, Karen. You can put two of those in a large. Um, so that's one thing to do with it, is to use it to help divide up and kind of organize a large utility tote, or it's perfect by itself. Um, it has become my new go-to when I have five or 10 or 15 packages that need to go to the post office. I can pile them all in there and just carry them right into the post office. Um, it would be good as a grocery bag. You could take it to the grocery store and set up a couple, three in your grocery uh, cart and fill your groceries in there and then you would have them ready to go when you, uh, you know, if you push, your, put your groceries on the conveyor belt and then put your totes in the bag, in the uh, grocery, sat, grocery cart. I just lost the ability to speak, I'm so sorry and then have your bagger bag into your small totes and you would have, you'd be ready to go. Okay, that's just a couple of thoughts there. I'd love something that would fit inside my fold and file as a separator. I don't know if that would be the thing that you would want, Sue. I don't think this would, and I don't know that I know what would. I'd be happy to think on it though. All right, let's see what this does. Oh yeah, that's pretty, huh? Yeah, I like that. And then, I think you could do that like that. See, if you had this, Oh, look at that, you guys. That's a, that would be a really good card front right there. Hang on a second. Let's do that, the Dan. Let's do that, a Dan. Watch this. Okay, so pretend that's a card front. And I'm going to ink this once. Then without re-inking, I'm gonna hinge step. Right down the card front. And then cut this down to your size and you have got an automatic ombre card front. Boom, just like that. How pretty would that be? You could make a whole set of note cards like this in each of the five in colors. Gosh, I think I just made a card for, for next week. All right. So that is that right there. Fun, huh? Anything else you guys want to see? Oh, thank you, Karen. You're sweet. You are sweet. All right. I am going to sign off and let you guys get back to your three-day weekend. I really, really appreciate you spending this time with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.